All right. Welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. We're, I'm in Colorado and we had our first freeze of the year. I woke up this morning, walked outside and there was actually ice on the ground, which you probably don't have to deal with that much. No, it's a, it's a chilly 57 degrees here this morning. Oh, wow. San Francisco. Man, it must be rough. It is. It's difficult. I even have to put on a jacket sometimes when I go outside. Oh, my <laughs> so, so what do we got on the agenda for today's podcast? Well, I want to talk about a subject called getting paid a percentage. For This is for copywriters. It might also be for business owners on the other end, but it's especially for copywriters and marketing consultants. Let me start out by telling you about the opening of a movie I saw last week. It's a, a cool movie called Echo in the Canyon about Laurel Canyon in LA in the 60s. And at the opening of the movie, the late Tom Petty uh, is talking to Bob Dylan's son, Jacob, who's the narrator of the movie. And Tom Petty is showing Jacob a Rickenbacker, Rickenbacker, 12 string electric guitar and Petty plays about six chords and he stops and he says, you can't afford the rest. And then he laughs. And here's what's underneath that joke. They're making a movie. And if he went much further under music industry rules, the movie makers would have to pay a large royalty for whatever song Petty was playing. If he went on long enough. And it's definitely a joke because there are many full length songs throughout the movie which I thought was excellent, by the way, but it brings to mind an important question. What's the story about royalties or percentage of sales payments for copywriters? We hear about them all the time, but for most people, they're a huge mystery. I have some experience with percentage deals myself, and I have a lot of clients who do them as well. So I thought we could take a deep dive into that topic. And come to think of it, I've often been asked if copywriters podcast pays me a royalty every time I say this copy is powerful you're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast and most of the time common sense is all you need but if you make extreme claims or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health finance and business opportunity you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. Uh, so um, let's talk about deals and percentages and royalties. Here's the idea. You're a copywriter. You're going to write some copy for somebody that's going to sell a product or a service and it's going to make them a lot of money. And a number of things can happen, but it all boils down to you're getting paid a few pennies or a few dollars or a lot of dollars for each sale your copy makes. And it just sounds like such a great idea. And all of a sudden you start doing these imaginary numbers and, well, if they sold a million of these and I'm getting a dollar twenty on each sale, then I would get $1.2 million for a sales letter. What could be better than that? So, yeah, um, there, there's a little more to it than that, and, and, and that's what I want to talk about. One thing is, as a copywriter, you want to know if this is institutionalized in the business you're writing for. And institutionalized means it's part of their regular practice. Like, Businesses that have employees have institutionalized payroll. They, they're <laughs> good and they have enough money. Uh, they pay their employees a paycheck every week. Or, and there are certain practices that they do over and over. As far as I know, as far as I've been able to figure out, publishers, people in the publishing industry, are the only business that has institutionalized paying copywriters royalties. And there's some high level business thinking that I, I want to explain before we get into the nitty gritty. Here's the idea from a business point of view, you as the copywriter, you create an asset 
And an asset is a thing that when used or implemented throws off profits. So you create the asset and then your publisher buys the asset for a fee plus a licensing amount. That is, they'll give you some money for the letter and they'll give you a percentage of sales, less refunds forever. That's, that's the unique idea. It really does exist. And as far as I can tell, publishers are unique in doing this. Now I get a few payments every month, royalties, percentages, and guess what? They're from publishers. And I've done percentage deals with other kinds of businesses. Some of them have worked out. Some of them haven't. But um, with publishers, you hear stories from people like, I got a check from something I wrote 12 years ago. I, I, I rarely hear, well, the big publisher decided to screw me on royalties. I'm sure it happens. I've never heard of it. But for businesses that are not publishers, where they haven't institutionalized this, in other words, they're not used to doing it, it's not part of their business model, it gets a little riskier, okay? And to, to be fair, most of us don't write for the big publishers. Most of us aren't writing for, you know, Agora or one of many Agora's subsidiaries or um, Philips doesn't exist anymore, KCI, bottom line, um, Rodale doesn't exist anymore. I think they went out of business, but those kind of businesses, you know, I mean, that's Gene Schwartz got quite a bit of art in his um, um, Park Avenue apartment in New York from royalties he got from Rodale and, and bottom line, um, Marty Edelson's company. Most of us don't do that. So what I want to do is um, sort of go from the best to the worst and, and then let's talk about it, okay? Best, from the, best to the worst means here's the best kind of business to get into a percentage deal if you're a copywriter, and then here's the worst kind, and then we can get into what kind of percentages and what kind of deals you can strike and so forth. Can I jump in real quick? Absolutely. So I think a lot of copywriters may have heard about royalties. I know that most of my clients bringing the idea to them was almost alien. They looked at me like, what are you talking about royalties? Um, I have royalties on two pieces that I've written, but the majority of the stuff that I've written, it was just such a foreign concept to them that it was almost impossible to even sell the idea of, of giving royal or getting royalties on them. Um, a little bit of your input on, sh is this something that copywriters should even attempt to get from a client who just has no grasp of the concept? Yeah. Um, if they have no grasp of the concept and they can't understand it and it just doesn't make sense in their mind, no, you shouldn't. If they're open to it and if they're flexible and if they can see why it would be a good idea for them and they're trustworthy, yes. And you're only going to find that out by talking to them and interacting with them. But I think I'll be able to answer that question a little better with my rundown of the best people to do this with and the worst people to do this with too. Okay. Okay. So... The best kind of client to do this for is someone who, one, can track sales, two, is willing to share that data with you, and three, has good enough profits to give you a piece of those profits. That's really important. If someone has a 40 or 50 or 80% profit margin and they're profitable in general, then a royalty is a lot easier than if they haven't priced their product correctly or if they're not running profitably to begin with. And we'll get to them in a minute. But for there are a lot of businesses that might have a 50% margin and they're doing well. And this may sound nasty, but it's actually very positive. The business needs to be greedy enough to want to have and make more than they already do 
and is smart enough to realize they'll get their biggest bang for the buck with you if you have some skin in the game after you write the copy. Because if you've written copy for someone and it does well, eventually it's going to wear out. If part of your deal is you'll come in and rewrite it for free or you'll work with them on it or you'll help them with the funnel or you'll brainstorm and they're not going to like take advantage of you, but they're just going to work with you productively on that project, it can turn out to be a really good deal. Um, so that's the best kind. Here's the worst kind. Or here's a worse kind. It's a friendly client who sort of says yes to everything, but they're not that organized. And this is most important. They're not that profitable. Okay. And they just want to put together a handshake deal to give you a portion of the profits. That sounds great at the start, but sooner or later, there will be reasons or other people that are going to make getting paid difficult. I'm not a big fan of contracts. I do most of my things on a handshake deal. There's one group of people I have contracts with. You want to guess who they are? Mm, I would have no idea, actually. Publishers, the same ones who pay me royalties. If they're a large company and they have a change of management or you get acquired, they have a contract that they have to honor. Uh, if they don't want to, they won't. But, you know, that hasn't happened, fortunately. Um, there's rare exception where you have a friendly, casual person who's also scrupulous and goes out of his or her way to make sure you get paid what is agreed to, but I call that a rare exception, not the rule. Now, here's the worst percentage of increased client, and this is a problem that a lot of people, including me, ran into early on before I had a lot of experience, and I think the same is true for other people. This is somebody who's struggling. They're struggling because some conditions aren't right that are keeping them from being profitable. It could be their fault entirely. It might not be their fault at all. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. Because in terms of you getting paid, see, to them, if they don't have to pay you up front um, for a sales letter or for some copy or for a funnel, or for a VSL or for a script, that's great. That's money that they really don't have that they don't want to pay you and they can make you all kinds of promises. But here's the thing. If they're not making enough money, I, I don't know what it's like in Colorado or anything, but here in California, I've been in a situation where I'm not making enough money. The PG&E bill, you know, keeps the lights on. You still have to pay it. You don't get an exception of not paying it the rent is due or the mortgage payment is due. Uh, the body says, well, we don't need to eat any food until you're making it. No, you still have to do that. If you have kids, um, the kids have their own needs and demands. Um, if you have credit card bills, you still got to make a minimum payment. And here's the problem with the client who is not profitable. So they got a hundred dollars and they got $140 that they need to pay out with all those things I just mentioned. You think you'll be at the top of the list or the bottom? You'll be at the bottom. And that is the problem. Uh, the people who are most eager to do percentage of deals um, may have quote unquote good intentions, but as far as follow through, not real good. Have you ever heard of anyone getting screwed that way as a copywriter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all you want to say? Okay. <laughs> um, now, you may think, well, this is going to be different because I'm a good person and they're a good person and you may both be really good people, but it's, it's hard to repeal the laws of gravity and um, the laws of constraints. I mean, I'm not trying to get too scientific about this, but if there's $140 due and only $100 to pay it, how are they going to prioritize the money? Why in the world would they pay you if they already have the copy? I've seen the opposite happen too. I've seen where a copywriter writes a grand slam piece of copy and it starts raking in the profits and then it comes time to write the royalty check. And the person says, man, I'm writing, I'm, I'm writing a check for a lot more than I expected. And even though they're getting a lot more money in from that piece of copy, 
they're, they were thinking, oh, we'll give them 2% of however much sales. And they got triple that sales. And now they have to write a check for three or four times what they were expecting. And that also causes hesitancy. It does. And so, uh, you know, someone who's used to writing those checks, I mean, let's take Avaldo um, as, as a copywriter uh, reportedly wrote copy that made $80 million for Agora Financial. So he, he made seven figures in royalties. They just have an accounting department that writes the check. That's it. You know, it's, it's in the contract. It's in the computer. Um, you have an entrepreneur who has to write a million dollar, um, a uh, $4 million royalty check. Might be a little harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, not something he's used to. So, you've got to have someone you can trust to do this. And the only way I've found you can trust to do this is having had some previous business experience with them, or they have previous business experience in their own business doing this. Um, Coming to someone you've just met and doing a percentage deal, regardless of how profitable they are, is very risky. Um, And, you know, you can button it up and lock it down with contracts. You can even take a piece of their business. If they don't want to pay you. They'll find a way not to pay you. And so the question is, how do you find out? And I think the way you find out is by doing some other projects with them on a fee basis first, just to make sure that things are going to be copacetic to use a really old word when, um, when the big, when it comes time to write the big check. Okay. That's more important. I originally did this episode because um, a friend of mine, and I really don't want to get into any details, but I'll just say he was talking, he wanted my advice on this. And it was from an old client who only followed, he told me, he tracked it. He only, the client only followed 40% of his advice. I said, well, how can you trust this person to, how can you be sure that the writing the royalty check is going to be inside that 40% and not inside the 60%? He hadn't thought about that. And I guess that's why he called me. He wanted you know, a little bit of clarity on it. But let's say it looks like a good deal. What's a fair percentage to charge? And often the number varies between what you said, 2%, 2% of gross sales, less the refunds. So they make a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, 2% of that would be $2,000. But if they had a 10% refund rate, it would be 2000 less 10%. So it'd be $1,800. Okay. Um, on the high end, and this is what I charge. And this is what, um, a lot of other copywriters at my level charge 5%. It's 5% of gross. It's not 5% of profits. And again, you've got to find out that there is enough profit built in to start with into this offer itself. So, you know, if they're selling stuff that costs them, they're selling stuff on Amazon, say, that costs them $10 and they're selling it for $11, that's a 9% profit margin. That's not enough to give you half of that. Are you kidding? They, they've got a lot of other expenses. So, but there, there are things, especially information, especially um, seminars. Um, there, there are things where, you know, the profit margins are much higher. The risk is higher too, but the profit margins higher. Yeah. So I'd say between two and 5%. Now, an, another question people have is, um, about fee. Um, do you charge a fee as in, if you're going to take a percentage? I think it's always a good idea to charge a fee. Uh, one thing that I think is a really good idea with percentage is to charge a fee as a draw or as an advance against the first royalties for that amount. So that will definitely keep your skin in the game to earn back your advance and also therefore increase um, the profitability of this. Um, Another question is how do you know when you're ready to do this? 
Well, um, often your market will tell you. I have one client, a guy I'm mentoring, who has been doing a lot of things with funnels, backends, email sequences for his clients, and they've started to approach him about doing things on a percentage basis. And these are people who are running six figures of traffic um, monthly, I guess, maybe maybe more than six figures a month. So there's a, a real opportunity for them and for him. And he's a known quantity and they're a known quantity. I think that's the best way to do it. I think the red flag is if somebody approaches you with that first, and then when you hesitate, they start trying to bully and shame you. Well, don't you believe in your skill enough to, to take a risk on it and stuff like that? That's, that's like um, raving a, waving a red cape in front of a bull, uh, and you're the bull, and you should just turn around and not look at it. Um, you know, I, I think this kind of thing really does come out of trust and out of ease with working with each other. Um, there's a certain kind of intimacy that comes in business from getting to know someone over the course of time. And, you know, everyone has their good points and bad points. You should know the person's good points and bad points. And if unwillingness to write a check is a bad point to begin with, it's just going to get worse the bigger the check gets. Yeah. I want to go back to the first point that you made and really hammer that home and the reason behind it. Uh, you said the best people to, to negotiate this with are publishing industries. And the reason why, in my opinion, is, and this comes from my experience in, the, in my background in the music industry, they're already used to paying royalties. They pay royalties to the producers. They pay royalties to the engineers. Their accounting department already has, it's all streamlined. It's not anything new. So when you say, hey, we're going to need royalties for this, they're like, oh, yeah, our accounting department knows exactly how to do this. We do this with everybody. It's, it's totally normal. Let's go ahead and, and work this into your copy. Um, when you're writing for someone who has never done this, not only do they have to worry about are we going to give him an additional or her an additional 2 to 5% ongoing, now we have to train our accountant to do something different. Now we have to train our bookkeeper to do something different. Now we have to worry about a, a different way of doing our taxes at the end of the year. So it's not just I'm asking you to give me two to five percent. It's I'm asking you to change all these other areas of your business as well. Yeah, it's a real good point. And it may be hard for some of our listeners to understand. And it used to be hard for me to understand. And here's why. We like new ideas all the time. In fact, people pay us because we come up with new ideas. There's a difference between having a new idea and implementing a new idea. And human nature is resistant. You know, in personal growth space, they say that it takes 21 ideas to develop a new habit. Well, Implementing a new idea is essentially like asking the business to develop a new habit. And when you have a business and you have more than one person and more than one function, more than one department, more than one tradition, you are bucking a lot of those things by just coming in with your new idea and asking for it to be implemented. It, it seems real easy to come up with a new idea for some of us. And we can't imagine why it would be hard to implement it. But if you step back and look at your own life, you realize you pretty much do the same things the same way you've been doing them for a long time. And that's how human nature is. And that's, that's a little hard to grasp simply because you can get so transfixed by the idea of getting all this extra money for your valuable copy that you don't think about all of the other um, moving parts in, in the equation. Absolutely. David, this has been a fascinating episode. I think that we might have narrowed down who this actually applies to, but for the people, the, the copywriters in the audience that this does apply to, it's a very, very valuable piece of information to have. And um, I know personally from the fact that I collect royalties from a couple of pieces of copy and from music that we produced back in the day, 
royalties are definitely an awesome part of of my income each month. So um, if you can, if you have the opportunity and if you're in the position to take this advice and implement it into your business model, it's definitely something to be looking at. Well, Nathan, I know you're a hip hop guy, but would you be willing to go so far as to say royalties rock? (laughs) Royalties rock. Yeah. All right. All right, David. (laughs) Another fantastic episode. If you want to check out more, head on over to copywriterspodcast.com. And did you have any closing thoughts before we're out of here? Uh, listen to this again. It, it's, it's a lot of, uh, I put a lot of thought into this. And if, if you are like, I don't know, fixated on the dream that I'm going to make a lot of money through royalties, um, that's the territory. Now take a look at the map and start thinking about what could be real for you. Cause it really can happen, but It'll happen a lot better and a lot faster if you avoid some of the mistakes I didn't talk about that I made that came to a lot of these understandings. Nice. All right, David, uh, fantastic episode. Thanks again, and we will catch you next time. Catch you next time.